this video is about retired and bored out of my skull. What does that sound like to you? Do you get bored, hun? Very, very rarely. I, uh, I have an active imagination and I pursue life on a daily basis in such a way that no matter what, I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> okay, end the <of> video. <laughs> For That's example, it. right? For example, one of the things that I learned, I'm blessed. I'm so blessed because very early on, I understood the concept of the value of time. You know, we're going to tell you the secret to not being bored in your retired early lifestyle. So the secret to not being bored is I learned this early on in my 20s, which was, I, it was a blessing. I started saying, you know, I give credit to the idea that uh, just I value time and I understood the value of time and the, and having extra time gave me the ability and the time to read and to read a lot of uh, books on, on this kind of a, a subject. And what I learned is that it's important to start making lists, don't wait. This whole deferred life prescription causes people to put aside so much. It's like you don't know what you're missing. So that what you want to do is, before you get to the level you want to be, to say, well, I'm uh, trying to achieve this goal. Before you even get there, don't wait. Because waiting is part of the deferred method of doing things. Start making a list right now. Start making a list this minute, right now. Grab a pen, I'll, I'll wait for you. Grab a pen and paper, or on your computer, on your word pad. It's better on a regular piece of paper. And start making a list, and it's got several columns on them. One list is what do you what do you like to do? Number one. Okay. The next the next list is what would you like to do that you haven't that you don't know you like already, but you would not but you would like to know more about. You're not really sure. You don't know. Maybe you like it. Maybe you don't like it. But you would like to know more about. So you got separate lists here. You know what do you like to do, and then what would you like to pursue and know more about. And so the key is to start making a variety of different lists where you list what you're actually doing, what you'd like to be doing, what you'd like to know more about, uh, and what some of your interests are. And when you make lists on, say for example, some of your interests, you might say, well, I'm interested in knowing more about the rest of the United States. Oh, okay. And then you could say, well, I also, I think I might like to travel, you know, like that. So you start looking over your list. Now you keep these lists handy. And nowadays, back then there was no internet. Nowadays it's really easy to browse videos and try to get interested. But we have information overload today and there's too much information and a lot of it isn't really solution oriented. But we have information overload nowadays. And so you keep these lists and you look them over every chance you get. Now when you do this, you look them over and don't worry, you're not necessarily gonna get an answer right away. But you look them over and you go to sleep. And the next day, and every day that you look them over, you kinda use your imagination and fantasize a little bit, look them over, think about them. If nothing happens, that's okay. Go to sleep. The next day you wake up and you start, your mind starts opening up to different things and different ideas. And this is what it's like when you're thinking for yourself and you start expanding the rubber band of your mind and you know to enlarge in enlarge in the scope of your thinking arena and this is how I, I come up with some of this stuff the club bells I've never done club bells before never knew anything about them when I was younger I used to go to the gym and I used to be a uh, Barbells and dumbbells. It was all about the barbells and the dumbbells and the, 
As I got older, I, you know, I, I started noticing that my body reacted differently and it just wasn't doing it for me anymore. And so I investigated different things and I found something that really resonates with my body and that's these club bells. It really is much more than just a club bell. It's a solution to my fitness challenge. My fitness challenge has to fit in with the type of lifestyle that I live. It was like problem, solution. Oh, got a problem. I want to do this uh, exercising, but I can't get any. Well, you know, I'm going to have to make my own. Really thankful and happy to be able to even make my own. My example is about finding our sweet spot and improving the situation that we're in. That's what, it, what my conversation is about. It's not about the club belt. It's just an example of how we keep improving things when we think for ourselves, do things for ourselves, and we reach a level and a sweet spot where it just becomes so amazing. So, you know, so it's just a process, you know, that we go through to uh, realize that there's never a dull moment when you uh, come out of the prescribed way of doing things. And by doing so, you're going to stand out and you're going to have to be okay with that. You're going to stand out because, to me, it's a progressive way of thinking that people really haven't reached yet. And, uh, sure, you know, you could sit there and throw money at everything. There's billionaires that threw money at everything and thought they could fix everything. And then they reached the end of their life and they realized how wrong they were. They couldn't fix everything with money. So clearly, there are things that are fixed by our ingenuity and our self-sufficiency. So my homemade club bells, if you think this conversation is about that, let me be a little more clear. My homemade club bells give me freedom. They give me the freedom to stay fit, regardless of where I'm at, no matter where I go, and without concern to finances when it comes to fitness. That's what, that's what that's all about. <laughs> anyway, thanks for staying with me. Hope you got something out of that. Have a wonderful day.